We're going back to creation itself. The web is a time machine. We're talking about pictures of the earliest galaxies and, and stars formed. The James Webb Space Telescope was designed to look deeper into the universe than ever before. But no one expected that what it would find would feel almost sacred. Its latest images haven't just stunned scientists. They've opened a conversation that stretches beyond physics and into faith. So much so that the Pope himself described it as witnessing the seeds God has sown. So what exactly did JWST capture? And why are even the most brilliant scientific minds struggling to find the right words? What JWST is and why it's a big deal. The James Webb Space Telescope is the most advanced eye we've ever opened to the universe. It was launched into space on Christmas Day 2021 and now floats a million miles from Earth, facing deep space with a mission to look back in time and show us how everything began. This telescope wasn't made just to take pretty pictures of stars. It was designed to go deeper than anything before it. For the first time, we can see galaxies as they were over 13 billion years ago. That's just a few hundred million years after the universe was born. And yes, the light from those galaxies has been traveling all that time just to reach JWST's mirror. So how is this even possible? The secret is in how it sees. JWST doesn't use regular light like the kind we see with our eyes. It uses something called infrared light, which is more like heat. That allows it to look through clouds of dust and gas floating around in space, which is the same stuff that blocks older telescopes like Hubble. What used to be hidden is now right in front of us. And the view? It's not just detailed, it's breathtaking. We've seen baby stars forming inside clouds, glowing nebulae full of color and galaxies so far away they look like tiny sparks at the edge of time. These aren't artist drawings, but real snapshots of the universe, taken with a golden mirror over 21 feet wide. Yes, gold. The mirror is coated with it because gold reflects infrared light better than almost anything else. That's what lets JWST collect even the faintest bits of light from the far corners of space. But JWST isn't just looking at galaxies, it's also watching planets. Not the ones in our solar system, because we already know those pretty well, but distant planets around other stars. These are called exoplanets. Some of them might have clouds, oceans, or even the right mix of gases for life. And for the first time, we can actually check. JWST can study the air around these planets and pick up signs of water, carbon dioxide, and other clues that something might be living there. That's a huge step, because for years, we've been asking if we're alone in the universe. Now we have a tool that can help us start answering that question. The telescope is a giant achievement. It took over 20 years to design, test, and build. It had to fold up like a piece of origami to fit inside its rocket, then carefully unfold itself once it reached space. Every piece had one job, and if even one of them failed, the whole mission could have been lost. But it worked, and the images it has sent back could change everything as we know it. The images that shocked the world. When the JWST started sending back its first full-color images, the world stood still. Scientists expected sharp photos and new details, but what they got was something else entirely. These images looked more like paintings than science. They made people pause, stare, and feel small in the best kind of way. The colors, the shapes, and the depth was like the universe had suddenly pulled back a curtain and let us peek behind it. There were thick clouds glowing with light, stars being born in hidden corners, galaxies stretching across time. One of the most talked about images showed a galaxy called NGC 602 tucked inside a nearby dwarf galaxy. It's a place where stars are still forming, and the photo revealed a cloud that looked like it was on fire, but in reality, it was cold gas formed by radiation. Young stars, hot and bright, were bursting into view like diamonds scattered in smoke. Also, the Horsehead Nebula was another beautiful image sent back by JWST. The image showed a dark shape rising out of a glowing pink cloud, it's one of the most famous spots in space, but the telescope made it feel brand new. Details that were once hidden showed up clearly, and he, horse's head, looked more alive and real, almost like a living creature frozen in space. 
Another image that made headlines was of the Ring Nebula, a bright round shell of gas left behind after a star died. There was also the Firefly Sparkle Galaxy, named for its glowing points of light, each one a cluster of stars. And the detailed photo of planetary nebula NGC 1514 showed colors and textures we had never seen before. People around the world couldn't stop sharing the images. Some saw art, some saw science, and others saw something spiritual. And one of those people was Pope Francis. The Pope's Reaction When the James Webb Space Telescope started revealing the earliest light in the universe, many scientists were amazed. But it wasn't just astronomers who were moved. One of the most unexpected and powerful reactions came from someone you might not expect, Pope Francis. The leader of the Catholic Church didn't just praise the telescope's discoveries as impressive, he saw meaning and a connection between the stars captured by JWST and the God he believes created them. At a Vatican summer school for young astronomers, the Pope gave a speech that surprised a lot of people. He didn't just talk about science in a distant or polite way. He spoke with real joy and passion. He said, Surely this must be an exciting time to be an astronomer. But it was more than that. He called JWST a truly remarkable instrument and spoke of the joy it brings when we look at these stunning images from deep space. He described the telescope as a way to witness the seeds God has sown in the universe. That's a poetic way of saying that, for him, the stars and galaxies we see aren't random. They're part of a bigger plan and signs of something sacred. Then he quoted the Book of Baruch, a part of the Bible that isn't often mentioned in science discussions. It says, The stars shone in their watches and rejoiced, and their creator called them, and they said, Here we are, shining with gladness for him who made them. The Pope used this verse to show that even ancient people, long before telescopes, looked at the sky and felt something powerful. He told the students and scientists, In our own day, do not the James Webb images also fill us with wonder, and indeed a mysterious joy? as we contemplate their sublime beauty. That phrase, mysterious joy, says a lot, because sometimes, even when we can explain what something is, we still feel something bigger when we look at it, a kind of awe. Pope Francis encouraged the students to share that feeling with others. He told them that by spreading this joy, they could help make the world more peaceful and more just. That might sound surprising, but in his eyes, the act of learning, discovering, and of sharing beauty can bring people closer together. His words stood out because they weren't just about faith. They were about the connection between science and belief, the past and the present, and between people and the stars. It felt like a rare moment where two worlds that often seem far apart were actually saying the same thing. The Pope's reaction reminded everyone that science doesn't always have to challenge faith. Sometimes it deepens it, and sometimes what we discover out there helps us better understand what we feel here. Theological awe meets scientific curiosity. For a long time, people thought faith and science couldn't mix. One was about belief, the other about facts. One focused on the soul, the other on the stars. But what we're seeing now, especially with the James Webb Space Telescope, is something different and more honest. The line between science and spirituality isn't as thick as we once believed. In fact, sometimes they meet in the very same place. The images from JWST have quickened that feeling in millions of people, no matter their background. Some see God's hand at work, others see the beauty of nature, but the reaction is the same wide eyes, deep silence, and that little voice inside that says, this is bigger than me. That feeling is where science and theology shake hands. Pope Francis understood this when he called the telescope's discoveries the seeds God has sown. He wasn't dismissing science, but was honoring it. And in doing so, he reminded everyone that curiosity and belief can live side by side. In fact, that's not a new idea. Some of the earliest astronomers were also men of faith. They believed that studying the stars was a way of getting closer to understanding creation. Even the Vatican has its own observatory, run by scientists who study space while also holding on to their faith. They don't see a conflict, but a deeper meaning in the data. For them, science doesn't erase mystery, it opens the door to it. 
That's exactly what the James Webb Space Telescope is doing right now. It's not just giving us more information, but also providing us with perspective. It's reminding us how small we are, and at the same time, how connected we are to everything around us. When we look at a galaxy that's 13 billion years old, we've been able to see across almost 13 billion years of cosmic time. It's easy to feel insignificant, but some people see it differently. They see it as proof that we're part of a much larger story, that our lives, brief as they may be, are unfolding in the same universe that gave birth to stars, planets, and maybe even life far beyond Earth. This kind of thinking is where science meets spirituality, not in the sense of organized religion, but in a moment of humility. You don't have to be a priest or a physicist to feel it, just a human standing under the stars, wondering how it all began. So when people say that science and religion are always at war, maybe they're missing something. Maybe both are just different ways of asking the same big questions. Where did we come from? Why are we here? And what does it all mean? Hints of alien life? Ever since humans first looked up at the night sky, we've wondered the same thing. Are we alone? It's one of the biggest questions of all time, and for the first time in history, we might be close to finding an answer. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just looking at stars and galaxies, but also at exoplanets, which are planets that orbit stars outside our solar system. Some of these planets are the right size, the right distance from their stars, and even have the right temperatures for liquid water. That's the first clue. But JWST can do something older telescopes never could. It can actually study what's in the air around those planets, which is huge, because if you want to find out if something might be alive, you start with the atmosphere. JWST has already looked at the skies of a few distant worlds, and what it's found is surprising. In one case, scientists detected signs of carbon dioxide, which is a gas that's linked to life on Earth. In another, they picked up hints of water vapor floating in the clouds of a hot, giant planet far away. On yet another, there may even be signs of methane and carbon-based molecules, which could come from living things. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean we found aliens. JWST hasn't seen flying saucers or little green men. What it has done is open the door a little wider. It's giving us real tools to explore the ingredients of life, not just on Earth, but out there, across the galaxy. The exciting part is that we're still in the early days. JWST has only just started its work. There are thousands of known exoplanets, and that number keeps growing. Some of them are rocky like Earth. Some have clouds, and some may even have oceans. And with each new planet JWST observes, we get closer to spotting a pattern or something completely unexpected. The idea of life on another planet used to sound like science fiction. But now, it's a serious topic in science labs, universities, and even space agencies. Because if JWST can prove that a planet has the right mix of gases, the kind that only living things can produce, that would change everything. It would mean we're not alone, and that life in some form found a way to exist somewhere else in the universe. And that thought is both thrilling and humbling because we've always assumed Earth was special. And maybe it still is. But the universe is big, and JWST is helping us see just how full of surprises it might be. Even if we don't find aliens tomorrow, the fact that we're seriously looking and that we can look is a huge step forward. Because the question isn't just, is there life out there? It's also, are we finally ready to find it? And thanks to JWST, the answer might be closer than we think. A moment of redemption for the church and science. The Catholic Church has not always had the best relationship with science. One of the darkest chapters happened in the 1600s, when Galileo Galilei one of the most important astronomers in history, was put on trial for supporting the idea that the Earth orbits the Sun. At the time, this went against what the Church believed. Galileo was forced to take back his ideas, and was placed under house arrest until he died. That event caused a deep divide between faith and science, and it became a wound that took centuries to begin healing. 
but in recent years, the Vatican has been working to repair that history and rebuild its scientific reputation. One major step came with the support of the Vatican Observatory, one of the oldest astronomical research institutions in the world. It still operates today, not far from Rome, and is fully staffed with scientists, many of them Jesuit priests who study stars, galaxies, and the mysteries of the universe. Their mission is simply to explore space and seek truth while holding on to faith. At the heart of this work is Brother Guy Consol Magno, the Vatican's chief astronomer. A trained scientist with degrees from MIT and a deep love for both science and faith, Brother Guy has become the face of the Church's modern approach to astronomy. He speaks openly about how science and belief don't have to clash, but can work together. For him, studying the universe is a way to better understand the God who created it. That message became even stronger when Pope Francis publicly embraced the discoveries of the James Webb Space Telescope. His speech celebrating the discoveries of the telescope and what it means for both science and religion became the sure sign that the Church was no longer standing in the way of science, but walking beside it. And after centuries of tension, faith and curiosity were finally on the same path. What this means for humanity. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just giving us new facts about the universe. It's giving us new ways to think about life, time, and purpose. By looking deeper into space than ever before, it's also helping us look inward at what it means to be human. When we see a galaxy that's over 13 billion years old, we're not just looking at something far away. We're looking back in time, almost to the beginning of everything. That kind of perspective shifts something inside us. It reminds us how small we are, yes, but also how lucky we are to even be here. Thinking, wondering, and asking questions. That's why the reaction to JWST hasn't only come from scientists. Theologians, spiritual leaders, artists, and ordinary people have all felt the same thing. Awe. And awe doesn't belong to science or religion. It belongs to all of us. For centuries, science and faith were often seen as enemies. One asked for proof, the other asked for belief. But today, a different picture is forming. More and more people are realizing that science and spirituality can have a conversation, not a fight. Both are ways of seeking truth, are driven by curiosity and wonder, and they both ask the same deep questions like, where did we come from? Why are we here? And what's out there? The James Webb Space Telescope has become part of that conversation. Its images speak to something ancient in us that you don't have to be religious to feel it. But if you are, the connection is hard to miss. Centuries ago, the writer of Psalm 19 wrote, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. That verse was written with nothing more than the night sky and human imagination. But now, we have images that show what those ancient words may have only dreamed of. So, what do you think? Was this just another scientific milestone? Or did JWST capture something that goes beyond science? And if this really is just the beginning, what might it reveal next? Leave your answers in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy this video, please click on the next one on your screen.